Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I have my reflow hammerhead here all disassembled and in pieces. And the reason I did this is this pump here has been sitting now without running for about three years. Now I've plugged it in the, the motor shaft and everything's working just fine. All the there's no noise from it and everything, and that's one of the reasons I always liked this reflow hammerhead in my last system. But because it had been sitting for close to three years and it had a good year of use before it got taken down with the last system, the old seals were still in place on it. External pumps, because the motor shaft is, is here and it's air cooled, you have to be able to have a separator between the water and the actual pump motor itself. So what they have here are these seals. Now this is the old seal here I, I took out. It's really corroded. It has a little ceramic ring on the top and it has an actual spring so it could kind of move in and out to hold that seal in place. As you can see there's a lot of rust and corrosion built up on it and inevitably over time these seals just fail. When I took the old tank down it wasn't leaking or anything but it had already been in use for a year and after sitting for another three years I figure there's no point taking a chance on this old seal because it might just fail on me and you're going to have a leak and a spill situation when this happens so it's best to try and avoid that if it's possible. Now this is the main volute here where you have your water intake and then your water outflow on your return. The back side of it though it's normally bolted on to the motor housing here and the seal fits right on inside there. Now when the seals in there basically it just is inserted in there and I can actually do it because I've already cleaned this whole thing out with alcohol and gotten off all the sealant that was there. To replace it there's a couple of steps. Now I found the cheapest place to get these seals and this is one of it here it's a US seal off the shelf part that reflow is using which makes perfect sense because why reinvent the wheel when someone else has already done it for you. Now I ordered this directly from Reflow and I think they were about $28 a piece which is significantly cheaper than most places because I've seen upwards of $50, $60 for one of these seals. Now when you do take the seal out of the box you want to be very careful with it not to drop it or damage it and this little ceramic ring on top you don't want to touch it. There's also another insert that comes with it that has kind of a rubber boot and another piece of ceramic. This goes inside your impeller. Now I still have my factory reflow hammerhead impeller and I never really used it. I think maybe it was on there for a total of maybe five minutes until I realized there was way too much flow and I needed to switch out impellers. So I'm not going to replace this side but I'll have a spare ceramic ring and boot for an impeller if I need it. And I did buy two of these seals because like anything else in this hobby you want to have backup stuff in place and while I know that they were very uh, prompt in getting me these seals from Reflow I'd, I'd rather have one on hand sitting here because it's an inevitability this, as this pump runs for years to come the seals just going to need a replacement and more than likely I'm going to just be proactive and replacing the seal. Knocking the seal out was pretty easy. Once you've removed your impeller, and Reflow does have some good documents on this, but I just figured I'd show everybody because I'm, I'm more of a visual person. When you take off your main housing here right off of the motor, you'll be able to access the back side of the old seal here. And all you simply have to do is find a socket that's approximately the right size for it, and just go ahead, use a rubber mallet, kind of tap it out gently because you don't want to damage the plastic around here and you don't want to mutilate this seal as it comes out either. In my case, when I took mine out, the ceramic ring and boot that are on the impeller actually stayed on the motor shaft and didn't come off. So I needed a pair of uh, channel lock pliers here just to get them off. Installing the new seal though, all we really got to do, and I've already done this, is clean everything off with alcohol. I'm using a 91% and this stuff will basically strip off any kind of dirt, debris. Also on the motor shaft, just because it had been exposed to quite a bit of salt spray in my last tank, it had a lot of rust and corrosion building on up on it. 
So I actually turned it on and hit it very lightly with the piece of sandpaper just to pull that skin of rust and corrosion off. You don't want to do it too much because the shaft is tapered up here towards the seal and you got to be careful because if you take too much off you're going to have a lot of problems. Now going back to the seal here, I've already cleaned the housing off as best I could here with alcohol. Matter of fact, I'll just get it one more time here real quick. There was a lot of rust on here. And you can see it's coming out. There's just a tiny bit of dirt left on it now. Before when I was, I was doing this, it was just coming off completely rust brown. So we've gotten this all cleaned up. And the new seal... I'm just going to hit this inside steel edge because this is going to sit right in there. And it, it does seat in there very pretty good. It's got a little bit of a tight fit, which is what you want. I'm just going to set that here for the moment. Now, seating this seal, you don't want to touch that ceramic ring. Now, I do have some very large size sockets, so when I put the seal in, I'm just going to put this really big socket right over it just to press it in because you don't want to you don't want to bend this at all otherwise there's a really high chance of having leaks especially around the metal edge the reflow recommends that you use some silicone sealant not just a grease but actual silicone that's what you need to put in here so i'm going to go ahead get this opened up and then we're going to go ahead and put that seal in and then we'll start reassembling the pump go ahead open up my silicone it is just some uh GE silicone one with no additives in it like everything else in your aquarium you never use anything that's other than pure silicone or if you're sealing glass I recommend the RTV 108 which is more of adhesive but for this we just want to use silicone one start putting a little bit on here Don't want to put too much. All right, silicone's on. Go ahead and seat the seal a little bit. And it just barely presses on there by my large socket. Now remember, it doesn't, you just want to touch the outer edge. and it just slides in place. Now that I have that in place, you can see there's just a little bit of silicone there showing, that's okay. I'm not too concerned about that. Just gonna leave it there and let it seal and check the other side of it. Looks good. So now we've gotten this part sealed. But that seal on there now, we're prepared to the point to where we can start doing a reassembly of it. Now of course, if you're gonna need to run your pump right away, you're definitely gonna wanna let this silicone cure probably for at least 24 hours. If you have a pump repair you gotta do, be prepared to have an alternate plan if you have to do a seal replacement. I'm gonna go ahead and get this reassembly done get to the impeller part here I'll stop and just show you how I put the impeller back on first thing I have to do is get this housing back on and then we'll get the four bolts on here once those are secured then we'll start reassembling the rest of this pump with this first housing back on we now have this whole thing sitting here where the shafts here and you see the shaft spins but the seal part here does not right, when you're screwing this impeller on it's really important that you make sure that it just goes on nice and easy the first part of it here shouldn't have any pressure or resistance. I'm not even holding the shaft secure right now. I'm just letting it slowly spin on. And if you get any kind of resistance here, you want to stop because if you don't, there's going to be a chance you're doing a cross thread. And if you wreck the threads on this motor shaft, 
Well, it's probably not going to be a very easy fix. So I'm just still going in. Now I've got to the point where I'm meeting some resistance. I'm just turning the shaft. And I felt it tighten up. Not hearing any kind of noise, so I'm not doing a manual turn on it. So we should be good here with the impeller. Now we can go through the circuit and the rest of this put back together. Now I've already cleaned out the other part of the volute here, but I do have the O-ring I have to put back in place, so I'm going to first go through and clean this off with some alcohol just because it's been sitting a while. The thing to note, you know, this being the seal here, I mean, there's always a chance you're going to get dirt and stuff building up in here as water pressure is pushing on this when the pump's going. So once this kind of moves out, I could see originally that the seal was right around here. I'm going to go ahead and just use a bit of a, a water-based lubricant here as they uh, recommend in their document. And you go ahead and do that, and then we'll install this, and then we'll start putting this back together. there you have it. I've gotten the seal replaced, the impeller installed again, and I've bolted down the whole pattern here of bolts to hold the volute on for this hammerhead pump. The only thing left is I just got to put the fan housing on. So I've now gotten the air cooler for the end of the shaft all cleaned off as best I could here. That's just going to get pushed right out of the shaft here. Now again, the key with this is that you don't want to push it all the way in. If you do, it uh, it's going to start rubbing on the housing here and causing a lot of extra noise and vibration. You, you don't want that. And that's it. The reflow hammerhead pump has now had its seal replaced. And it's been fully reassembled. We'll have to do the final test when I get water in the sump tanks, which, as I've said in previous videos and some of the live streams I attend, that the target date to get water in the tanks is June. So we'll find out if this seal replacement and just reassembly of the pump was all successful. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, go ahead, give it a like. I'll make sure I put a, a link to Reflow's instructions on here as well so you can get the actual document that they have if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and if you'd like to see more videos on my 1600 gallon system and you know equipment overviews or repairs like this one go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel i put out one at least one video a week thank you for watching and have a great day